As Martin gazed out of the fields full of heather and oats waving at him, he felt a sense of excitement and hope. He had recently split from a larger clan, determined to set out on his own and build a new family. With a twinkle in his eye, Martin surveyed the lands before him. This was where he would make his stand, where he would build a home for his family and create a new life. He pointed at a good spot close to the water and near a rock formation and called the rest of the family closer. Look. Here, see the eels glistering in the water below. The water is clearer than you've ever seen. His younger brother Patrick nodded while holding his wife Anne and gently caressed her hair. This is a great place. Our sons can grow up here in peace, far away from the struggles of our past clan. Rebecca and sister smiled, while Norman and Ewan rushed past them to scout around the area. The kids both were tireless, but Norman has been sick before, so hopefully the gentle spring and away from the busy life of the clan would help him recover faster. Martin and Patrick set up places to wash up and get drinking water and created a storage for food. Martin, being the oldest, usually took control and this time was no different. Come, I've seen some berry bushes, let's gather first some of those and then find all twigs and stone you can find in the area and set up a camp. And can you get the goats and chickens here as well? Enough grazing grounds to the south of here. As the family dispersed, Martin set up a work area for crafting new stuff and prepared sleeping places for everyone in a cool sheltered spot between the rocks. Rebecca has always been by far the most handy of all and her attitude towards making new things have been a great inspiration to all. She pushed Martin aside. Martin. I got this. Bring me the materials and I will get us some tools. What do you need? Look at the reeds near the water and the grass, heather and oats around us. We need a sight of sorts. To harvest them more easily, Martin replied. No worries, I got everything I need for that, Rebecca uttered, while grabbing sticks and stones. Nobody touches this work area, it is mine. Anne looked at her sister with a smirk. Both sisters didn't need much to get by. Rebecca may be withdrawn and foul-mouthed sometimes, but had a heart of gold. Taking control like that was nothing new. After some crude sickles were made, Rebecca uttered, They may break from time to time, let me know where, and I will ensure a new one is made. Ewan, please join me, I made two. We can clear out some of the grass up north and gather the hay. Rebecca always had a preference toward the red-haired Ewan. His energy was sparkling and fiery like his hair and his beautiful green eyes. And after some hay has been collected, Martin came rushing by and nodded approvingly. I worked a lot with hay, making roofs and clothes in the past. Let me handle this. I can set up a treasure to create straw. After processing some hay, he called Anne and said, Anne, here, take this straw and set up some eel traps so we have fresh food later on. Don't make them too big. We only need a few per day per trap so they have plenty of time to replenish their numbers. Normans yelled excitingly, Eels, I love them, cooking up under a nice fire. Rebecca yelled back, Oh, fire, we need to set up a fire. Norman, did you gather enough stone to set up the campfire place? Certainly, Aunt Rebecca. They are in the storage area, Norman yelled. <laughs> How is this a storage area? You just threw everything on a heap in the grass, Rebecca sneered back. No worries, we'll sort that later. At least the branches are stockpiled properly. After setting up the fire and some eels were caught, Norman was rarely seen far away, always trying to fry up some extra eels and attempting to fulfill his insatiating hunger. Then the first night fell. The weather was gentle and everybody slept somewhat uneasy on the hearthstone floor, but with hearts full of hope and minds full of wonder. The next day more raw materials came in like flax, which could be woven in a sturdy twine strands. This allowed Rebecca to make some hoes and axes from sharp stones. Norman, could you please get us some clay by the waterside? Martin asked Norman after Rebecca made a stone hoe. It would be my pleasure, Uncle Martin, Norman replied while he ran off. The clay waterside was cool on his feet and felt refreshing during his hard clay gathering labor. It was hard work, but certainly better than gathering the oats and flax, which made you itch all over. Rebecca had been organizing the camp all morning and crafted and crafted and nobody could disturb her without getting a snap or a growl. But around her, more and more appeared. A basket for the fruits, a rack for the eels and also straw crude beds were made and a work area for clothing. Martin, always with the flags, created some sacks which helped for seas and made a good base for clothing if you just cut some holes in them. By this time Rebecca got a bit frustrated with the stockpile and after the clan cut some trees, demanded the following. Guys, we have all these branches and rocks laying around and I'm constantly looking for everything. 
if not breaking my neck over the stones laying around here. She turned towards Patrick. Patrick, please take your kids and make a proper box for everything. The stones, the clay, the gravel, the wood logs, the straw. I want everything organized and ready before tomorrow. The family, still quite used to her organizational urges and in the end helped a lot into bringing order and stability to life, so meekly followed her orders. Come boys, let's make some storage with the wood we have, Patrick said to his sons. Afterwards, and with the help of some new pickaxes, the sleeping area was expanded by digging some of the rock formations in the neighborhood. Using all the excess stone and wood, a wall was created around the sleeping quarters and a crude fence around the storages. The next night felt a lot more like home and the partially constructed walls gave a sense of security. Norman had been coughing a lot last night and Anne was not having it anymore. Guys, this clothing workplace and everything straw and flags need to move. I want this sleeping area floor clean and move everything in a secure area far away from this. Beside the work areas also some kilns were created. Simple heated stone structures to harden clay into bricks and wood into charcoal. And after a few days of hard work the clan was tired and Anne suggested Rebecca. Could you make something for fun and relaxation? Rebecca replied, sure sis, I can hollow some twigs and make flutes, but keep it for after work. I don't want to be distracted all day, that would give me a massive headache. When night was about to fall, the family would practice playing the flute. Especially Norman was a star, despite having to gasp for air for five minutes after. Ewan was strong, he would spend the entire Tire next day mining out the rocks out of the base, tireless and relentless, and Patrick would occasionally check on him, but get nudged away. Just a few more rocks, I got this. Soon the storage for cobble was bulking out, and Rebecca said, well, why don't we lay down some pads and maybe add floors to the other buildings? Anne was not agreeing much. Floors inside with cobble? I'm fine with parts, but please don't put it inside. Rebecca shrugged. Well, it's just temporary, we can easily replace it later. And so the decision was made to place gravel pretty much everywhere. All fire was moved to the south, under the cover of some leftover hanging rocks near the sleeping quarters, because of the rain mainly, and as fall was approaching, rain poured from the sky with increasing intervals. On a night, Patrick said to the clan, you know, we have a lot of excess food. We could rent beds, I've seen multiple clans nearby, and we can sell them bed and breakfast easily. How about we construct a second building to the west? Martin was a bit hesitant, didn't we leave the clan for some peace and quiet? But Patrick replied passionate, I know what you say, but I seen and if we meet some local clans we can start trading off our axes in gravel and other goods. Martin replied, okay, agree, but at least make it a log cabin. We have used a lot of stone for our own quarters and we just need more later and we have plenty of wood around. And so the visitor's cabin was constructed out of logs. Beside that, another crude shed was constructed to store all hay and herbs. They must be kept dry, as it would rain more and more often, and next to it, some land was tilled, but nobody really knew what to do with it. Plants, grass maybe, or roads. The outline of the shed was made of cobble, and Martin soon realized this won't do. It can't even support a roof. I need a bigger shed, where I can trash in peace and store all the hay in the world. So the walls were made out of clay, and a hay roof was added on top of it. Don't anyone dare play with fire anywhere near this building martin told literally everyone every time when all buildings were finally done patrick put up a sign visitors welcome the roof wasn't done yet and stone again but it was amazing weather so they could sleep under the stars for a bit the little settlement looked good clean and lively the summer was nearly at its end but the work that was done in just one season was something to be proud of Traps were set to catch on wildlife, which brought in pelts for warm clothes and of course meat. With all this production and several visitors, it was time to set up a trading post as well. Visitors were spreading the word around and multiple clans showed interest in the little settlement. Traders would bring in fresh eggs and even iron, which could be traded for gravel and other materials. And then it became fall. Crops already didn't do well in the summer and the fall and the winter would be even worse for crops. Food must be prepared for the coming winter and a new food source presented itself. Mushrooms. <laughs> Normans would call them shrooms and they are glibbery and weird to eat and rather wanted meat and sweet berries but Anne was not having it. Mushrooms are good for you. They make you healthy and strong, like your father. With the iron ingots, a warm stone oven was constructed in the living quarters. This will keep us surely warm, Martin said. We need to move all things with fire inside, Rebecca said. It's becoming colder, especially at night. You don't want the kids to catch a cold now, do you? 
The smeltery was made below the living quarters, a sturdy place with a pretty clay floor. Fireproof all the way, Martin said. Kitchen and meltery all in one. And within a few days, the area was even expanded once more for a crude smithy. Anne was complaining. There's too much to do. We never have time off. And Patrick kind of agreed with her, mainly because she's been nagging about it every night. We have money, we traded a lot, we need help around here. The visitors often hang around and do nothing. Why don't we ask them if they want to help out around here? A sign was constructed. Looking for work. Good wage. And it didn't take long for some workers to arrive. The help around was great. A new sawmill and bog iron sorters make sure planks and wood was available and stuck piled for the coming winter. The storage area was upgraded as well and at least the important parts got a new roof and of course the stone and everything that didn't need a roof could just stay up in the open. One of the workers called Don has been flirting around with Rebecca. Can't believe it, Patrick one night said to Anne. The entire clan was rejected by her but now she is hooking up with the first worker she finds. Must be the age giving her butterflies, Anne said. Before she gets really old, she must fly. And her words were barely spoken or Rebecca and Don came in. Sis, I'm leaving. With Don. I'm going to live with him. His clan would welcome me open-handed. Anne stared in shock. Are you mad? Me? As only girl with these four boys? You will be fine, Anne, Rebecca replied. I will visit after the winter and you'll have less mouths to feed. It was a long night. That night, nobody really slept. The next day, Rebecca left with Dawn. Patrick told Martin, let's upgrade the workshops, tailor, proper kitchen. With all these planks, we can work much more effectively. And Martin agreed full heartedly. We can do better, he said. These planks, proper beds, no longer sleeping on the floor. Talking about floor, Anne said. How about using them for some fancy plank floors? And so the remainder of the fall, the settlement got fancier, prettier and more and more like home. And then the winter came. And the winter came hard. The cold was bitter. The lake froze almost immediately, which blocked off access to the eels. There was nothing to forage as well. Stockpiles maybe last days. It wasn't that bad at first, but once it got colder, the fires just didn't do enough to keep the cold stone building warm. Martin spoke to Patrick about it. The visitors are angry. They keep complaining about the cold, the bats, and they eat so much. We have to send them all off. I agree, Patrick replied. We have to send them all off. We need our food. The days were short and the only food source was wildlife and fish, but it was hard to get it out in the cold. And all fires were constantly busy melting ice to keep drinking water available. And then Patrick got sick. A heavy burden as he had to be carried to the toilet, to be washed, to get water and Anne stayed at his side constantly. But with the best hunter in bed and another one constantly caretaking, there wasn't enough wood coming in to keep the fires burning. Martin was constantly fishing to keep the food coming. Then Anne couldn't take it any longer and collapsed outside. Ewan carried his mother to the heart, into the warmth, while his dad lay starving already in the big twin bed. Martin was trying to catch fish until the last moment, but the lake was frozen and the fishing holes kept closing. When Ewan stumbled back outside, he tried to get to the wood, his brother Norman following him. But Ewan collapsed right in front of the sawmill. Norman tried to carry his brother, but his brother was too heavy. And after getting the wood, he stumbled to the door, past the collapsed Ewan. First the fires, he said. The heart must stay on, he said. Once inside, his father and Martin lay dead in their beds. Mother was staring in the void, not responding. Norman tried to get back outside to get his brother, but collapsed on the doorsteps. Mother was last to die. She even made it through the night. 